Okay. Um, now this is to all my Facebook friends and friends on YouTube. Um, those of you who've been following my progress from well, actually, it started. It started in June last year, June the eleventh. Sorry, July the eleventh when I went with a friend to Quick Fit in Eastbourne, East Sussex um, to drop her car off for an MOT in service. We went, went for a walk down to the beach, um, spent the day on the beach, it was a hot day, uh, walked back and uh, as we had lunch on the way back, a late lunch, as we walked into Quick Fit, to pick up the car, um, the chap behind the counter said, oh, can you come back in 10, 15, 20 minutes, whatever. We're just doing the paperwork. So we just sat opposite Quick Fit. There was a wall which surrounded the car park. And um, it was a hot day, so r rather than wait in the um, waiting room, we sat opposite. Now, we'd only been sitting down about couple of two or three minutes and uh, I saw two police officers approaching and um, I sort of looked around I thought where are they off to and they walked straight up to me and my friend and um, it said we were acting suspiciously um, and they wanted to search us now you know <laughs> I'm not a young man, um, neither is my friend. She was a 57-year-old cancer patient. And um, I objected to being searched. I don't want any thugs approaching me in the street and wanting to search me. Um, I stood up off the wall and one of the officers pushed me and he pushed me hard in the chest. And he, sh he shouted out, stand back, stand back. And then the lady grabbed my friend and tried to arrest her, forced her arms behind the back. She was in pain because she had had all the lymph glands removed from her right arm and she couldn't physically move her arm, arm behind her back. Um, I stepped in to protect her, but in no way did I touch the police. I shouted at them to leave her, I pleaded with them to leave her alone. And just then a BMW pulled up. And I ran to the BMW, there were two police inside, I said, please tell those thugs, and that's, that's what they were. Um, they were thugs dressed in police uniforms, completely mind controlled idiots. Um, <clears throat> uh, now I have to try and keep calm. I did warn Sergeant Mullins from Sussex Police that I was coming after them. And uh, I'm now part of a Royal Commission into organised crime. There's major crime and fraud and corruption in Sussex Police, Brighton Magistrates, Probation Service, Attorney I mean, it's rife. Now then, this is going to go down a lot of rabbit holes now I have been on the um, Graham Hart show and I believe I forwarded Graham seven documents um, and a few other friends that I trust now um, Graham Hart he works for a renegade broadcast Re renegade broadcasting I've been on there once it's, uh, I think it's run by a guy called Kyle Hunt, K-Y-L-E, H-U-N-T, Kyle Hunt. Now, if any of you folks out there, and I know some of you have, have watched the docu documentary Hell's, Hellstorm, H-E-L-L-S-T-O-R-M, you will understand how important this message is. We're coming up to um, the EU referendum and um, there's major fraud going on. I, I'm just going to look, to give you an idea of what's going on. 
Um, this was a letter I sent to Prof Pre Professor George Lees, who's exposed a lot of corruption. And I wrote to his MP, and I made his MP an offer he couldn't refuse, because they threatened to section George. I'm just going to read. I'm just going to read this out. Be patient. This is very important. Uh, I'm going to come on to some very important stuff shortly. Okay, this is to Professor George Lees. Help offer email from John Patterson to George Lees, copy to Edward Ellis. George, please excuse the formality of this email. It is not my usual style because I have had help producing it. I have had help with my case. You might benefit with the same help. So this is me offering Professor George Lees and anybody else who's been victimised by this system that I have the authority under the Royal Commission to help them. I'm not making this up. I have, for the last several months, I have stamp-proof files which are in the Royal Courts of Justice. We have 10 copies of each, signed and stamped. They cannot lose any because <laughs> there's, there's, uh, there's others to back it up. So let's go on with this letter. I have had help with my case. You might benefit with the same help. You are a British citizen and have superior jurisdiction protection rights in England as well as Scotland. Top judges sold protection reversal frauds for corrupt offices, officers against citizens. A corruption remedy process is recovering protection rights for the citizen. I have them. The Crown needs proof sets to manage the equity monarchy trusts and relies on the citizens to get them. <clears throat> Anyone who has the expertise to service the process qualifies as an equity lawyer. Mr Edward Ellis does. In 2010, there was a corruption investigation of law courts managed by the Lord Chancellor for the Crown. Mr Ellis managed cases that enabled citizens to get proof sets and the Lord Chancellor to get more. It was completed in 2012. The Crown and Parliament made a negotiation offer to top judges for the exchange of immunity terms for remedy cooperation. In other words, <laughs> you help us to expose these frauds and you get immunity. I mean, that's an offer most people can't refuse. In fact, it was my lawyer who made the offer to Tony Blair. Tony Blair had two offers. He had 10 months to step down as president, uh, Prime Minister or face publicity. And you know what that would have led to. And that message was relayed via my lawyer to the Queen herself. And it was the Queen that had the special meeting with Tony Blair, which led to his stepping down. I know it sounds crazy, folks. This is all true. Now the letter goes on. The top judges rejected it and gambled on an intimidation fraud to silence Parliament. Remedy sabotage until the 2015 general election and then whatever was needed to get a corruption majority and immunity frauds. Parliament responded by vesting corruption remedy powers in a royal commission with the use of Parliament and the Cabinet as execution agencies. Mr Ellis managed cases 
to get the proof sets the Royal Commission needed. The corrupt officers needed a hung parliament but did not get it. The Royal Commission continued the corruption remedy work. Part of the evidence is the fraud remedy precedent dated 14th of October 2015 in the Matrimonial Asset Division case of Charland versus Charland. It, rest it restates very old law that fraud invalidates all. Another is a conflict interest disqualification precedent, the lost luggage case of Emerald Supplies versus British Airways. Mr Justice Smith, Smith ignored a conflicted interest and tried to keep control of the case. Bear with me folks, I'm not a professional speaker. I'm just like everyone else, I'm, I'm a citizen that, <laughs> that I've, I've managed to get very lucky and I'm trying to help you. One case, this is a letter that I sent to Professor George Lees. One case might be helpful to you. Corrupt officers needed a mental illness discredit frauds against corruption witness. They used her estranged daughters to get a mental health examination fraud. The first appointment got a sanity finding opinion for the citizen because Sussex mental health team thought it was a family reference case. They discovered it was an organised crime reference and issued a second appointment notice for which an insanity finding was the only credible explanation. The citizen moved out of the mental health district before the day before the second appointment that forced termination for a, lo for a no longer resident reason. The corrupt officers got sanity proof concealment frauds from the National Health Service and the law courts and continued the mental health fund frauds using professional authority powers. I hope this is going in. You may have to replay this a few times to understand the implications of this. OK, the letter goes on. This is my letter to Professor George Lees. Mr Ellis, who is my equity lawyer, used the case to force protection frauds at every stage of the process. The Royal Commission directed the Secretary of State for Justice to deny top judges any chance to make dismissal decisions that ensured protection rights for the citizens in the Court of Appeal. It forced corrupt officers to commit criminal conspiracies for protection breach contempt of the Court of Appeal when using inferior jurisdictions for protection frauds. On the 27th of August 2015, they got the mental illness, they got the mental illness finding fraud on the 3rd of September 2015, the citizen got issue of the health hearing fraud in the administ administrative court, which is part of the High Court. The Royal Commission directed the Secretary of State for Justice to issue a hearing notice before the administrative judge judges had a chance to do anything. On the 26th of November 2015, there will be a contempt hearing in which the professional authority officers and the hearing judge will have to admit the past contempt fraud or commit new contempt frauds. The Royal Commission and the Court of Appeal await the outcome. The professional authority has filed an appeal skeleton that is now contempt proof. Meanwhile, Mr Ellis has used corruption cases for Crown protection claims. 
they create full disclosure obligations that cannot be discharged, discharged without conflict admissions and conflict disqualification admissions by the claim managers. The tests discovered police forces and, and Crown prosecutors dare not speed camera proof, uh, sorry, dare not use speed camera proof and no insurance proof to issue summons. My mouth's drying up. One second. We're coming to the end of this. Now I'm going to show you a few video clips and direct you to where you can find out more information because I've been blocked on Facebook from posting. Now, when I was originally arrested and then I was, I was arrested twice. Um, second time was um, actually inside Seaford Police Station. Um, every time I've been arrested and tried to post, and every time I've gone to a court hearing, they've blocked my access to Facebook. The same way they've done it today. Now these idiots, they don't understand that I have at least 200 other names that I use on Facebook. Um, so when they block me on one, I post the same information on the other one. And I'm using one now. Uh, and in fact, uh, that's why I'm under a different name. But as you know, this is me talking, John Patterson, one T no sugar. Mr. Ellis has used corruption cases for protection tests of the law courts. Mine is one of them. On the 27th of November 2015, there is a one day trial at which the Crown Prosecutor and Magistrates will have to make protection respect decisions for me or commit contempt or commit criminal contempt by failing to do so. The Crown, protect, the, the Crown protection claims in witness statements bear stamp filing proof from the Court of Appeal, Crown Prosecutor and the Police and Crime Commissioner. I have authorised Mr Ellis to use my case to make a Crown protection claim plus witness production application for you and get stamp filing proof from the Court of Appeal. Crown Prosecutor and Police Commissioner. He says he can serve the protection notices on the Scottish National Party, leader M. Ms. Sturgeon, plus your Edinburgh Parliament MP, plus Scottish National Party, Westminster MP Mr Alex Salmon and your local Westminster MP and anyone else you wish. The protection application will be for a forced medication stay plus treatment. Investigation into discovery whether the, medi the medication plan is a health sabotage fraud against as corruption witness or a valid treatment. Mr Ellis uses county libraries for access to the internet to defend himself against internet frauds against him. I have offered to host a Skype interview for you and him. He has accepted. I will email scans of the Crown Protection Claim plus Evidence Officer of seven lead witnesses if you wish. I thought it would be better not to attach them to this email because it is a long and and there is a lot of contact. If you want anything done, please let me know. The case references plus court details plus medical authority details plus personal represent, representative for use in a protection claim and service arrangements. I've copied 
I the email the email have been copied to Mr Ellis. I look forward to hearing from you. John Patterson, that's my phone number address, Mr Ellis, phone number address. Now, unfortunately, uh, no, sorry, it's not unfortunate. Now, although George Lees thanked me for sending uh, sending a letter to his MP, which I, which I copied to him, uh, it must have worked because they backed off from the false medication, which was, was basically a medical lobotomy. And I wrote to George Lee's MP, I accused him of attempted murder, and I told him point blank that he would suffer dire consequences if he went anywhere near Professor George Lee's again. So fortunately for George, he didn't have to use Edward Ellis, but another doctor friend of mine has. She was thrown out because she was exposing the fact that the treatment that she was giving to patients was detrimental to her health. Um, her case is also part of the Royal Commission. Uh, it's to do with vaccines, which as you all know, are toxic. Um, she's working with experts in Canada. I've met the lady several times. She's genuine. She's a personal friend of David Noakes. Um, just Google David Noakes GC math. Uh, David Noakes regularly cures four stage cancer. There are 21 alternative practitioners in the United States who were curing four-stage cancer, every single one of them have been murdered. They've murdered my lawyer's brother. I went to visit a lady last week with my lawyer, a 75-year-old lady. They actually murdered her husband while he was in hospital. They paid a 60, th they paid her 60,000 pounds to shut her up. They thought they could pay her off. I've countersigned all her documents because they all know who I am and I've countersigned um, there's an, there's an ex-policeman who uh, I've met, his name will remain nameless for now because um, he was exposing a very powerful paedophile and he was thrown out of the police department. He's working with us. Um, now, when I first met Edward, we didn't get along. Um, neither of us trusted each other for obvious reasons um, but you know I trust Edward well, I, excuse me because I've been through a lot people that should have known better of said bad things about my lawyer he's been fighting these people for 11 years uh, these people should have known better. In fact, I should have been on the Sean Maguire show on the 9th of March. And unfortunately, uh, that was the day they locked me in Lewis Prison for 21, 21 days and nights. And while I was in prison, I should have been on the Sean Maguire show that night. While I was in prison, my friend, who uh, I went to her aid, on the 9th of July, on the 11th of July last year, she was listening to Sean Maguire and two people that should have known better that had phoned in in my place, basically rubbishing my lawyer, calling me a silly boy, and that I should have taken the fine and pleaded guilty. 
Are you kidding me? Plead guilty to what? I've committed no crime. I was banged up in a shithole for 21 days for allegedly malicious broadcast. Malicious broadcasting. And obstructing police. Well, listen, Sussex police. If obstructing the police is stepping in to protect you two thugs, you know who you are. If that means that that's obstruction, well, listen, I will obstruct the police till the day I die. As long as you keep assaulting innocent people and putting innocent people in prison, I will be in your faces. Listen, I'm not going to say any more about that. But Daniel Turk, PC Daniel Turk, PC Alastair Bachelor, Sergeant Munn in some Sussex police. I warned you guys that this you wouldn't this wouldn't be the last you hear of me. I promised you two years ago that I was coming after you. And now I've got the Royal Commission behind me. We've provided the remedies. Uh, our bundlers arrived on the desk of David Cameron, Boris Johnson, the National Union of Journalists, Ian Hislop at the Private Eye, and others. I do believe I sent these documents to Graham Hart, and I'd be pleased to do another broadcast with Graham Hart on the Renegade Broadcast Network. This information has worldwide implications it needs to go viral. I'm going to say this to my friends and anybody who's listening to this now. I've been pleading with you for the last two years to write to your MP and ask your MP a few simple questions. Now, I need to give my voice a rest, but basically, folks, I'll play a couple of minutes of this. And this is all you have to do. Hello folks. I've, uh, I've had a shave. I've put on my suit and tie. First time I've worn it since I lost my job seven years ago. I'm just about to go into Sussex Police. Um, I was last here well, the first time I was here was a year ago. Uh, the last time was a few weeks ago, and um, th th it was closed. They'd finished work at two o'clock. Uh, looks like they're having a market today. Okay. Anyway, they'd finished work at two o'clock, and um, I had to phone in and report a crime on a yellow phone, which is just about coming up. This looks like fun. Uh, we're going to have some fun inside East Sussex Police Station. This is a yellow phone. I phoned up to report the crimes. Massive crimes. Uh, fraud, theft and money laundering involving senior politicians. I called uh, I picked up the phone, called a number, and uh, they asked me, I got through to the call centre, they asked me where I was calling from. Anyway, that was a waste of time. Anyway, here we go. My uh, witness, I'll just say, my witness didn't turn up. They never do. Everybody's scared. Everyone's full of, you should do this. And you should do that. Well, when did you last get off your asses and get down to your local prime minister, uh, local MP's office, and ask him a few simple questions? Questions like this. Questions like this.
Please ring for assistance. Okay. Hello there, my name is John Patterson. Do you mind if I record this for my own personal safety because there are people's lives in danger? Um, we're not really supposed to be generally allowed to record this. Okay, well, but, so you don't want me to record this? Well, what's it for? Okay, I reported in June last year uh, a serious fraud. Um, I have forensic evidence, which are from ex-military sources. Okay. I was interviewed in my home mm -hmm. in June mm -hmm. by one gentleman from here and another from Lewis. Mm -hmm. And the information was always sent, always <laughs> had been sent, which I sent to my local MP, Norman Baker. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I did send relevant information to Norman Baker and unfortunately for Norman Baker, he acknowledged receipt and he asked to see evidence. Now, this next video is very important because, um, let's, let me just find it. Um, mm, um, it was a phone call that I made to Maria Caulfield, which I'll come back to in a second. Um, but let me just show you what Sussex Police did to me. Um, my appeal uh, to stop my look initially on the um, 3rd of September, they sent the riot police out to stop me going into Brighton Court for my own hearing. Um, eventually that led to a second hearing where I was arrested and locked in Lewis Prison for 21 days and I was so pissed off when I came out and angry that I went I walked down from Lewis Prison, I walked down to Brighton Law Courts, where they sell all, all my possessions. Uh, not all my possessions, they had my video camera. I picked that up. And this is me, after 21 days, locked up inside Lewis Prison. I wanted the world to see and understand that there's thousands of people in my position that have been silenced, murdered, slandered and locked up to silence us. We have all the evidence. Just listen to this. Hello friends, this is me again. Um, I've just come from the Brighton Law Courts, which is um, which is behind me. It should be over there somewhere. Now, this is where it all started on the 3rd of September. Now, those of my good friends on Facebook who have been following this, it started on the 3rd of September inside Bright outside Brighton Law Courts, where the riot police were called to stop me going into my own court case because we had certain people, ex-Marine Phil McConnell, ex-Royal Air Force Gordon Bowden, that were there as character witnesses. They wouldn't let not only my character witnesses in, they stopped me getting into my own court appearance. Now then, three weeks ago, I was back inside Brighton Law Courts, where I was arrested again, and I've been locked away in Lewis, Lewis Prison, which is an absolute shithole, right? 
I've been banged up inside for three weeks for, for allegedly um, uh, malicious broadcasting. Okay? Now, I've just been back to pick up this video camera, which they took off me. Now, this is the same video camera that I'm supposedly have done some malicious broadcasting on. Well, I can tell you now, my YouTube channel is still up. It's got no strikes against it. And I've now got a case against Brighton Law Courts, the Attorney General, Sussex Police, uh, the Probation Service, and others. Mine is a landmark case. Um, I didn't have time to go on today, as you can see, to have a shave and a shower. Uh, I've just come from the probation office with my lawyer, Edward Ellis. Um, mine is a very important case. It's a landmark case that's going to make legal history. Yes, it is making legal history. And I'm supposed to appear in court. You know, my appeal is now the 2nd of June, which is tomorrow. Now, what we've done, we've exposed major fraud and corruption. <laughs> Trust me, <laughs> I, I've been through a lot to do it. Um, I've been at this some time. Although I've been working in the background, you know, now you know who I am. Um, just do a Google search, you'll find me all over the internet. Uh, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of my work plagiarised under different names and videos, but uh, that doesn't bother me, I, it's a compliment. And if these people want to, um, anyway, it, as long, I've even found my material on a Russian website, would you believe? Uh, the internet is just page after page after page, and you'll find me. Uh, now, this is the good news, because they haven't got full control of the internet. Um, they're trying to. Um, they've got control over Facebook. That's why, obviously, I'm not posting under John Patterson. On this occasion, I think I'll post under Peter Green. Uh, someone's banging upstairs. I'm sorry about that. It's just, it's just sod's law, you know, this is, uh, I'm, I'm in my flat and uh, of all the days for someone to decide to put shelves up, it just happens to be today. Anyway, don't worry about that. I was in a state, that's me after 21 days, um, it, it, the food was so disgusting, I literally lived on uh, soup for 21 days, I lost a lot of weight. Although uh, my good friend in Greece, Andy Devine, sent me uh, enough money to make phone calls and uh, to get extra sort of food like fruit. Uh, I wasn't allowed to have any fruit at all. They said um, they make hooch out of the oranges. And in that three weeks, I think I had probably three apples and two pears. Um, no access to any citrus fruits and um, although I had money in my account they wouldn't let me have access to it so I couldn't buy any fruit I couldn't even make any phone calls in three weeks anyway uh, I managed to make a couple in that time there was a nice lady there who um, who phoned out on the office phone she'd done me a big favour once again, I'm sorry about the background noise, but I'm not in a recording studio. I'm not a professional. I'm not a public speaker. I'm doing, just doing the best I can. Now, um, there's a couple of other clips that... Um, oh, yeah, one, one more important thing. Um, I was in contact with David Dees. He, he's a, polit a political artist. And um, I'd email contact with him about three, four years ago. And um, I sent him some material, certain research I'd done. Um, he sent me a book uh, 